Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host for day two, David Pringle. Welcome back uh, to the TM Forum Live, both to the audience uh, here in Nice and those watching worldwide on the web. Just a quick uh, recap of yesterday's keynotes for you first. We had uh, a session on uh, what the suits can learn from the sneakers, how to meet your customers' future expectations, getting fit for the digital world, uh, the challenges and opportunities presented by different cultures and different markets. And we also had a lively presidential style debate on the evolving role of the CIO. So uh, today we're going to tackle a couple more big issues, the, uh, the future of the mobile industry, no less, and also uh, how media companies can cope with the, uh, the challenges facing them. But uh, first, we're going to start by uh, seeing whether the TM Forum, the organizers of this event, is actually eating its own dog food. Uh, to that end, I'm going to grill Nick Willits. He's the Chief Strategy Officer at the Forum on that very issue. Nick, if you could uh, come and join me on the stage, please. Morning, David. Morning. Have a seat. So Nick, we've heard a lot about uh, the digital economy, how things are changing, lots of transformation, etc. Is the forum immune from all that, or are you in the midst of it? Absolutely not. Uh, much like our members, and we have, uh, just as of this week, topped 1,000 members, member companies in the organization. We are having to transform as well. We are absolutely absorbing and having to change the way that we work because of the changes that are going on around us. Mm. So in the last year, we've really focused what we've, we're doing around three key programs. The first focused on agile business and IT, how the company itself, how operators themselves and companies out there transform themselves to be fit for the digital world. Mm. The second, looking at customer-centric experience, how you're designing products, how you're understanding your customer, big data analytics and so on. And the third focus is on creating this open digital ecosystem. Yep. And to do all of that, that's a big ask. And we have to change how we work. So much more use of agile techniques in what we're doing. In the last year, you've seen us putting out a lot more work and a lot more how-to guidance rather than just uh, theoretical work as well. OK, so you're uh, literally eating the dog food in that sense. We're, we're trying to, we're yep. trying to, but it's tough. I mean, even in an organization like the Forum, uh, where the organization itself is relatively small. Because we have a 1,000 member companies and we're dealing with 100,000 people around the world, yeah. and those people don't all work for the same organization, in many ways it has the same challenges of a, a large business that's yeah. got many different drivers. So, so we have to work through techniques to do that, and we're really doing that by doing a lot of what we talked about yesterday in the Getting Fit session on bringing those people together Mm. around agile events, working together, rather than trying to do things remotely or in a waterfall fashion. Break down the silos, as it were. Exactly. Now, let's talk about a few of the big industry issues we're hearing about this week. Uh, NFV is obviously a major buzzword. Uh, is NFV hype, or is it profound? I, I think, like all things, you know, I think everybody's probably familiar with the Gartner hype curve. Uh, it's definitely getting up there. We're yeah. seeing what I'm calling NFV washing going on. Right. So. Uh, there's confusion creeping in around the difference between NFV and SDN. They are actually different things, and whilst they're related, they're, they're not codependent. Uh, and there's a lot of work um, that we're seeing uh, that's practical, but there's also a lot of hype around what if and when and so on. So uh, what we're focused on in the forum is very much getting down to what are the practical challenges. And for us, as the association that's always focused on the management challenges, that's exactly what we're doing. So we're looking at what's the challenge in managing a complex ecosystem, and we think that's actually more complex than what we're coming from. So, okay, so if you're looking at the practicalities, just quickly, when do you think NFV has a, a real-world uh, impact? I, I've heard everything in the last 24 hours from in two years to 15 years. I, mean, right. I, I think it's, <laughs> it, it's hard to say. I think you have to look at not from a technology perspective, how long uh, will it take, but how long have you got? Mm. So. If we look at the rate of decline in traditional revenues, high margin products for a lot of companies coming under fire, a lot of disruption going on. If you don't get the agility that comes with NFE, and let's be really clear, NFE alone isn't gonna help you. No. Uh, it's a piece of the puzzle. Yeah. So virtualizing your network, it'll be a bit cheaper, it'll be a little bit quicker, 
uh, to provision services and so on, a bit more flexibility. But it alone isn't the answer. Yeah. It's about having an agile business that goes behind it as well. Yeah, okay. Now, this word agile is everywhere. Yeah. Um, it seems to me that the best way to be agile is to start again. You know, um, clean sheet of paper, <laughs> cloud computing, uh, you know, uh, basically be a startup, and that's the way to be agile. Can established players compete with that? Can they move quickly enough? You can't move as quickly as somebody who's got one single focused agenda, yeah. but you can get your company in a position that it can move much faster. Mm. It may not be that you yourself are just driving the innovation, but actually absorbing the innovation. And if we look at the way the economy is moving now, uh, it's a matter of actually companies working together with others in partnership. So if you are trying to partner with an innovative player startup that's coming up, uh, and how you do that is approach it with this very slow uh, traditional business model. It's not going to work. It's yeah, not going to be a fit. Quite. So it's, it's having the agility to respond and outpace the market rather than be surprised when disruption happens. Okay. Now, some of the most successful businesses in the digital economy, Apple, WhatsApp, companies like that, are actually noticeable for not really partnering. They've just kind of gone on with it, got their heads down. The TM Forum stands for collaboration. Um, can collaboration work in a world where you have to move very quickly? It can, and we've been showing that over the last year. Uh, I, I think it depends what you're trying to achieve through the collaboration, but even though we could say that some of those companies aren't involved in the traditional groups and associations in a big way, uh, they are involved in being very open and creating an open partnership. So a lot of the tools and apps we all enjoy are, are based on things like Google Maps, for example, which are very open. Mm. So the edge is very open, and that's absolutely what we're advocating. So for the forum, what matters is we've got a very large group of companies who've got a big journey to go on. Yeah. And if you go on that journey alone, you've, you're only as good as the intelligence in your business, which may be very good. But if you've got a 1,000 companies you can leverage, you can leverage all of that knowledge. Now, the job for the forum is to make sure we're there at the right time with the right knowledge and solutions. And that's some of the work that you'll see here this week. And I, I believe that we can move that pace, and we're, we're showing that. I just want to push you a little bit on this point, because I, one of the issues around collaboration um, uh, linked with that is things like interoperability and standardization, yeah. which are of value to the world and consumers in general, but they do take time. You know, it, it, it's just part of the process. And one way to get interoperability is to kind of take over the world, almost, you know, Apple or Google style. Yeah. So again, you know, is there, is there room for the old style standardization, interoperability? I, I, I don't believe there's any room for any old style, slow paper type standards approach. And that's absolutely the change. You're talking about eating your own dog food. That's the change that the forum's been going on in the last year is to say, we can produce collaborative work in weeks and months, not in years. We can produce things you can pick up and touch and use, not things you read through very large documents and so on. It's a big journey for yeah. everybody to go on. But if you're focused on that outcome, I believe you absolutely have to have cooperation. Uh, not just because you need the ability for interconnectivity, mm. but this ecosystem we're talking about, unless you want to end up in a very small number of big ecosystems and you have to choose one, and then a, a bit like um, I, I myself am an Apple user, I have to say, but you, you're sort of locked in for life. It's very painful to yeah. escape that. If you apply that concept into an ecosystem when we're talking about the next wave of services, things like digital health, things like uh, digital utility, smart city management, that kind of lock-in isn't going to fly. Yeah. So interconnectivity becomes key, but you can move much, much faster. Yeah. Uh, you've just got to do it in a different way. Yeah. Uh, is there any examples you can give me of fast collaboration? <laughs> yeah. I mean, in the last year, so we set out 18 months ago on a journey towards our open digital program. Uh, looking at the, this whole ecosystem and we've in that time delivered a, a whole range of different pieces of work But the one that stands out for me is in the second half of 2013 We set out and said there needs to be a set of common digital services management APIs mm. to manage things like provisioning across an ecosystem quality of service catalog management and so on and we set out to say, let's set up what those APIs should look like specify them and then let's show that they work mm. so in a period of three months we designed them with a group of companies working together to design them through spec jams and hackfests. And then we took them into a hackathon in uh, San Jose last year, where we were putting them in front of not developers from large companies, but, but garage developers. Yeah, um, yeah. And what we've achieved are APIs that can be used in managing a wholesale uh, broadband provisioning service all the way up to uh, the next WhatsApp. 
Yeah. So, so there, we're showing that we can do the, the collaborative piece of that quickly, but what's important to me is that we then take it into the real world quickly, because that's where you really find out if it works or not, and, and that's what you can see here this week. Okay, quick, quick change of topic. I mean, again, coming back to the agility question, mm -hmm. How do I as a company know whether I'm agile or not? How do I know whether I'm more agile than the next guy or less agile? Yeah, it's a good question. It's a bit like asking a, a person if they think they're agile. They'll <laughs> probably look down and say, how agile do I think I am? Um, it, it's very much like, how quickly can you run the race? How quickly can you respond to an unexpected market factor or even better predict it? Mm. And how quickly can you get a new product or service into the marketplace? And perhaps what we heard yesterday is the most important. How quickly do you fail in the process of doing it? Failure is something that most people in large companies are really uncomfortable with yeah. because they've grown up in an ecosystem and a company culture that says failure is very, very bad. Yeah. I think what we heard from Google and Netflix, or the, the, the guys who used to work there yesterday, was the way digital native companies approach that is failure is OK. Yeah. In fact, something Adrian Cockcroft was saying to me was, in fact, you've got to look at the things that fail because sometimes you learn things through those. So, so you've got to be prepared to try things, fail them quickly, and the way you get there in the first place is that you're doing that with everybody working together in the organization, all the different functions in a team trying to deliver a very clear vision rather than this long sort of waterfall step and the end result isn't quite what you were hoping for. Does the TM Forum have some kind of methodology or technique of assessing whether a company is agile? Could I come to the TM Forum and say, am I agile? And you could tell like me. A, like a fitness check with your doctor. <laughs> yeah. uh, not yet, but right. we are working on it. So you'll see here this week the launch of our how-to guides. These set out a number of key principles yeah. for what an agile business looks like and how to get there. So the transformation journey itself. Uh, but absolutely, we're looking at what it takes to then measure that agility. And one key thing that we're announcing here this week is in partnership with McKinsey, a new telecom um, and IT assessment service that tries to measure that agility down in the detail. And it produces some really fascinating facts and that's available at, at no cost to all of our service provider members. So okay. uh, that's a, a, a really so key piece of work, but absolutely we want to get towards that come and sit down with the doctor and see, uh, see what the agility is looking like. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and I think the, the message I'd attach to that is you're never done in that journey. Right, yeah. I, I think a lot of people view transformation as something that ends. In reality, it's a continuous journey. So and there's never going to be an absolute measure. It's going to be relative because uh, yeah. other companies will get more agile. Ulti ultimate so. measure is, are, are, are your uh, numbers going in the right direction? Yeah, yeah. Okay, now let's talk a little, I mean, this event is a showcase for collaboration. Let's talk a little bit about what we can expect to see at this event and what the highlights are for you. Well, I hope that a lot of people have already seen a fair amount of it. Uh, up on level three at the hub uh, is really, for me, where what TM Forum does comes to life. We've called this event TM Forum Live because we want it to be the showcase of this whole member community. But what you can see in the hub are 15 projects from our catalysts and a showcase of our latest work. So grouped into Internet of Things, virtualization of everything, and the customer-centric activities. We've got member projects where any company, any provider can come along and set out a requirement. We want to achieve X. So I was just looking yesterday at a great demo uh, around digital health, for example. And we've got two very large companies who've set out and said we want a solution for quite a complex user case of uh, a digital health scenario. A team of normally very competitive companies have put their technology together and using TM Forum work made that stand up in three months. Wow. So you've got collaboration between people who might not normally collaborate. You've got a very clear customer at the end. And we're solving with a proof of concept something that you can actually go and touch and feel. It's not just some slides and it might work <laughs> like this. It's an actual working solution yeah. that you can interact with and poke and prod. So there's a, uh, for me, what's going on in the hub this week is a great example of that. There's also some fantastic work up there when we look at things like uh, what's going on with the increasing drive by a lot of our members to demand conformance to TM Forum's work in frameworks. Uh, so we now have 80 different products and solutions that are conformant to that. A uh, rising tide of different companies around the world demanding this as part of the procurement process. Mm. And a, a member team, again, that's put together a fantastic demo based on our 3D interactive model of frameworks where you can see which companies are conformant. So mm. we can see a trend there, but also, again, what we're doing 
progressing very rapidly through collaboration. Okay, very interesting. I think we can actually go and have a look at the hub now. Great. I think Tony's going to uh, give us a quick uh, showcase of what's happening there. Um, if we're Yes, hi David. Is. I am here at the hub. This is the centre of everything that goes on at the TM Forum. I want to give you a very quick run through so everyone knows what's happening this year. Right here at the very first part of this, this is the Internet of Things section. This is the end user perspective. This is the stuff that people are going to be worried about. And we have a number of really hotshot catalysts here. Smart energy, managing the digital handshakes, connecting the mobile work workforce, the privacy triad, balancing legal, commercial and ethical considerations, and digital health, curing the complexity of digital health. And further along, if I go straight through here onto the next one, we've broken it up. Over here, I've now got the perspective from the operators themselves. It's the digital transformation perspective. In here, it's a hub of activity. It's called the hub for that reason. You're going to see things like mission critical business services in the cloud, how to get to the agility that you're all after, capital asset management, small business opportunities, advancing the customer footprint. You can see it's hot. There's people everywhere. The third part of the hub, follow me quickly, come down here. Over here, we're going to start talking about virtualizing everything. You've heard so much about it. This is the perspective from an IT point of view. Look up here, NFV management ecosystem. It's the hot subject this year is NFV, as you know. All about SON, SLA over WANs, a service bundling in the B2B marketplace, cloud NFV. People everywhere talking, talking, a lot of action. And at the very end of it, if you follow me down here, we have a fantastic area where people can sit talk, get all the information that they want. Getting people out of the road is tough because it's so busy here. You'll see here, it's like a gift shop. You'll be able to take away all the things you need to learn about the team forum and you'll be able to talk to some of our experts. They're all around. This is the place to be, the hub on the third floor. See you soon. Okay, so we've got some real work going on. It's not just a, not just a talking shop. There's actual real tangible stuff. Real demos, there. real collaboration and critically done at the right time. Excellent. Okay, well, I'll get up there myself and take a look uh, later on. Great. Nick, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, David. Thank you.